welcome to airbrushtutor.com. This is the first video tutorial where we teach the foundation, the building blocks of how to start your airbrushing and that's setting up an airbrush space. This is probably the most important step that you're going to take in your airbrushing career and getting good at what you want to do. Make sure in this space that you make as comfortable space as you can. You may want a radio, source of music or something like that so that you can enjoy it. So you can enjoy the, the ambiance, create a nice, uh, a nice atmosphere for you to be able to paint in. Some of your artworks that you're going to do. Maybe a couple of candles, a bit of aromatherapy. Take away the smell of the paint at least. It is important that you do make your airbrush space as comfortable as possible. I'm using a small space in my garage. It's about 1.5 by 1.5 meters, a small little square space. Luckily I'm not claustrophobic. Um, but hey, let's go ahead and let's get started and I'll, I'll show you exactly what you're going to need to have your own little space set up. You're going to need good lighting, good ventilation if you can get it, and a place to put all of your equipment. This is the little space that I have to work with. Now it's not properly set up, but I have put carpet down. This all falls off and it's a bit gross and tacky, there's a bit of dust on the wall. There's spider webs, maybe a bit of cockroach poo, stuff that I don't want in here. And my option is either to cover all this in plastic, a white plastic, or I can paint it. When you're done with everything, make sure that it's all clean as well. You don't want to work in a dirty space. Unless you live in a dirty space, I'm assuming you keep your place clean. And if you don't, kids, you should clean it for your mum, keep her happy. Yum. You'll need a drill to mix this paint and a mixer. Beautiful. Pour the paint into the little tub. You could probably um, watch a better YouTube video for actually how to paint something. Paintbrush, roller, that's for the walls, that's for edges and anything hard to get to. So I finished edging out the space with the paint. Time to start rolling. Let's get started. That's spraying all over my arm. It feels fantastic. I'm having so much fun. The roof, the roof is on fire. Once you've finished painting, it's time to move on to the next steps to set up your airbrush space properly and to start looking at the equipment that we're going to have to use to actually be able to start doing something with your space. So what are the things to look for with a compressor? A decent sized tank. An air regulator. You want to be able to set the pressure and how much air can actually come out of the compressor at any given time. One thing that you want to make sure you have with your compressor is a moisture trap. A moisture trap will act to stop oils from getting into your paint and will stop water from getting into your paint as well. This is the little moisture trap that I was talking about. This will trap moisture in here and filter it so that air can get through but no impurities. The benefits of using this type of compressor is that they're cheap, you can get them from anywhere, they'll run for as long as you want and they can really take a beating. The disadvantage? You'll be deaf after three months. <laughs> I'd really strongly recommend that you use some sort of hearing protection with these. The last thing that you're going to need for airbrushing is a set of paints. Now you can search anywhere on the internet and find online suppliers all over the world. Just find your local supplier and get a paint brand that's been recommended either on forums or by others. So you've got your space set up, you've got all your paints, your compressor's locked away so you won't go deaf, and you've got your airbrush ready. Time to start learning. To learn more and to continue improving, keep watching our video tutorials and visit the site regularly. Thanks for watching.